Now that we've prepared our timeline for export, let's talk about the actual exporting process. Now this tutorial is gonna get a little tech heavy in terms of the terminologies that we're using, but these are important. We can't neglect these settings. We can't just go export, okay, done, and assume that the settings in Premiere are what we need them to be. So let's talk about how to export inside of Premiere and how to save our own export presets so we don't have to do that work over again. Let's come up to File in the menu bar. Let's come down to Export and come over to Media. Control M on the keyboard is the shortcut. This brings up our Export Settings dialog box. Let's talk about these settings because understanding these settings is gonna help you produce and export a video that is the highest quality possible to upload. There's nothing worse than working on a project and then having an export that just looks subpar. Now the first thing we have to understand is that there are two tabs up here at the top, our output and our source. Now down here underneath this black square, you can see a playhead and this is our video within our work area. And so we can start to see the source of our timeline and then the output Unless you're wanting to export in a lower resolution, our source and our output should usually look the same. So let's stay in output, because that's what our goal is right now. And let's come over here to our export settings options. And let's first talk about format. Come to the pull down for format and toggle that down. We have a whole host of different formats that we can export this in. For this class, and for most of the videos you'll ever want to upload to the web, we're gonna choose H.264, not H.264 Blu-ray, just H.264. This is an awesome format that is small in file size, but high in quality. And websites like YouTube and Vimeo convert your videos to the H.264 format anyway, so we might as well give it what it wants. I'm gonna select H.264. Now under preset, if you toggle that down, we have a whole host of different presets we can choose from. This is kind of nice because depending on the final destination of your video, it gives you presets that align the settings to that final destination. So if I knew I was uploading my video to YouTube and I knew it was a 1080 HD file, I would choose YouTube 1080p Full HD as the preset. Now before we start to explore what these preset settings mean, we wanna make sure that we name our output and that we're exporting both the video and the audio of our project. These checks are both on by default, but sometimes it's easy to uncheck one. So make sure that these are both checked. To name your project and to decide where you wanna save it, click on the title of your export. I'm gonna to navigate to my Montage 2020 folder that I made to even start this project. Double click. And this is our first file for our outputs folder because this is a final output. I'm gonna double click. Now, the file name should match the sequence, in this case, montage underscore 2020, but followed by an underscore, your first initial, and your last name, not caps, like mine here. I'm gonna choose save. So now we have our format chosen, we have our preset chosen, and we've named and placed our output file. Now let's come down here to the video tab and let's talk about these settings. The width and height is determined by not only our preset, but also the type of footage we've been editing this whole time. And we can see here under the summary options that our source sequence has been 1920 by 1080 the entire time. We've been editing full HD footage which means our width and height should match that. Now, some of these options are grayed out. Notice how the frame rate and the field order have been grayed out. This is determined by our sequence settings. So because when we made our project and we set our sequence to be a 29.97 or 30 frame per second sequence, and because we're working in 1080p, the P stands for progressive, these are already set by default but we can alter them if we needed to by simply unchecking this option and changing our frame rate. In this case, I don't wanna do that. I'm gonna keep these grayed out. 
We always want a frame rate that matches our sequence, and we're always going to be working in progressive scan. The aspect ratio will always be square pixels because we're working with digital footage. And let's click render at maximum depth. Well, let's scroll down here. We're going to scroll on past the encoding settings. These by default are great. The mastering display color volume is all grayed out, and so is the light levels. Those are all determined by the preset and our sequence. What I want to come down to, though, is the bit rate settings. The bit rate is a measure of how much data is being encoded per second of video. And that's why down here we can see that there's a megabits per second number. So let's look at our bitrate encoding options here with this pull down. We have three options, CBR, VBR one pass, and VBR two pass. It defaults to VBR one pass. What do these mean? Well, CBR stands for constant bitrate. VBR stands for variable bitrate. A variable bitrate allows the program to decide how many megabits per second your footage requires. So a shot like this here of the sunset would require a lot more data to be encoded than this credit title here, which only has two colors. So Premiere would decide to ratchet down the bit rate here and increase the bit rate on shots that require a lot more data. So what's the one pass and two pass? Well, this is how Premiere is encoding this. VBR one pass is gonna be a lot faster, but not nearly as accurate. Think of this as if you were driving down a windy mountain road. And I put you in a car and said, okay, you have to be 60 miles an hour down this road that you've never driven before. Well, you're gonna be going pretty fast, but you're not gonna be very accurate because you're trying to wind and turn as you go. But imagine if I said, okay, get in your car, and why don't you just slowly drive down this mountain pass first. Get familiar with the turns. And then you can drive down it at 60 miles an hour. Well, it's going to take you twice as long because you have to run through it twice, but you'll be a lot more accurate that second time. That's two pass. So one pass is kind of the quick and dirty, just works, but it's not super accurate in terms of how Premiere is encoding. VBR two pass is much more accurate, but it takes much longer. And that leaves us then to CBR, constant bitrate. I'm going to click on constant bitrate. CBR allows us to set our target bitrate, and it will maintain that bitrate through the entirety of your video. I personally prefer CBR because I like to control the bitrate of my export, not letting Premiere decide that for me. So CBR allows us then to choose the constant bitrate for the entire export. This will result in larger video files upon export, but it will allow us to control the quality at a constant. Now this number here, you would think, let's just crank this up all the way, right? Maximum quality. Not really. There are ranges depending on the resolution of video you're working with. For 1080p HD, the rate is around 18 to 24, which means I like to have my target bit rate set right in the middle at 22. I know that was a long explanation for a simple CBR change, but understanding bit rate is very important how much data per second of video we're giving your export. So CBR 22 for 1080 footage is fantastic. Nothing else to set here. Let's come over to our audio tab. We want to make sure that our audio format is AAC, Advanced Audio Codec. Everything you do should always be in the AAC codec. Forget MPEG exists. The audio codec is AAC. Our sample bit rate, we should keep at 48,000 hertz. That is a standard quality for video and audio output. And we're working in a stereo channel. Our audio quality, I don't know why you'd ever want to choose low or medium, so we're going to keep this on high. Scroll down. The bit rate for our audio, we can leave at 320. This is very similar to the bit rate for video, except now we're working in kilobits per second instead of megabits. 320 is the highest this goes. 
we want to work in a bit rate, not a sample rate. And that does it for video and audio. Those are the only two tabs we're going to explore here. Now let's come down here and let's check use maximum render quality. And now we're ready to export. We have two options down here to export. We can hit Q or export. Now by default, Q is highlighted. But what does Q mean? You would think we should hit export. These do the exact same thing, but they do so with different programs. Hitting export exports this video using Premiere's internal exporting engine. Q queues this up inside of Adobe Media Encoder, Adobe's standalone export software. Media Encoder is great, and in most cases, more stable than exporting using Premiere. For short videos, exporting through Premiere is fine. And for this, I'm going to go ahead and hit export. And there we have it. Now in my output folder, I have a playable MP4 video that I can upload to YouTube and share on the web. So let's talk about saving presets for our export settings. I'm going to keep my work area the same here and I'm going to come up to file export media once again. Now all of my settings are the same as when I last did this. So I'm not going to change anything. But what I want to do is come up here to where it says preset. Now you might be a little confused because I thought we chose the YouTube 1080p HD option. Well, we did. But because we changed some of the info down here, namely the bitrate, it changed that preset to custom because we customized that particular preset. What I want to do now though is save a brand new preset. So we basically just had to do this once and then we can save this and set it to this every single time. To save a preset, we can come up here to this down facing arrow with this little hard drive. Click on that. This allows us to save this preset. Now I like to name my presets in all caps so I can discern them from the other Premiere default presets. I also like to name my presets after their destination. In this case, we just made a really great preset for web use. Whether that's YouTube or Vimeo or any other website that requires video uploads, this is great for that. So in all caps, I'm gonna type web. We didn't have any effect settings. We didn't have any published settings, so we're not going to check those. Just click OK. Now our preset says web. And so when I come to export a video in the future, I can just come right down to where it says web and bypass all these other options. You can see I have other export presets that I've made for other things that I work on. That's how you save export presets inside of Premiere's export settings window. Make as many presets as you want. Maybe you're exporting specifically for Twitter or you're exporting specifically for YouTube or you're exporting in a uh, different aspect ratio. Save those presets, start to stack them up, collect them all because those presets will save you a lot of time and energy from having to redo all of your settings upon every export. I'd like to end by showing you how to export using Adobe Media Encoder. So this time, I have saved my preset. I'm going to come to Q instead of export. This is going to open up Adobe Media Encoder. It opens the project, and it's going to add it to the list over here. Now, this just gives us the same settings that we just set. Our format is H.264. Our preset is our newly created web preset and our output file has already been named to the destination. Media Encoder is great because it gives us a whole lot of different export presets, even beyond what Premiere has by default. But we're not gonna mess with those because we just learned how to do that inside of the Export Settings dialog box. All we have to do to export this now is hit Play. So why use Media Encoder over Export? Well, because what's nice is you can start to stack up or queue a whole bunch of different sequences for export. 
So if you're working on like three different videos and you wanna just set them all to export at the same time, hit that play button, walk away and go make a sandwich, Media Encoder is gonna work its way through all of those exports. And that's nice. And like I said earlier, I felt that using Media Encoder provides a more stable output. If I hit play, it's gonna work its way through that export. What's nice too is that it previews it. So if your render does fail, you can kind of see at what point and what clip it's failing on. Now it's done. We have our green check and we are good to go. So that's how you export and save presets in Premiere.